Hello everyone. So our company is called Verify. Verify once, share anywhere. And my name is Lucy. This is Varun, Eric, Kevin, and Ibrahim. So the problem that we wanted to tackle today is ID verification. And if you guys wanted to follow along, we actually have an app that you can download and kind of test out. The QR code should be available in the Slack channel and on Twitter under the hashtag Swarm. It's the uh, Verify ID app that you can see on there as well. Yeah, and so we actually have a member of our team, Rune, right here, who's had some first-hand experience with some of the pain points of the current systems. Okay, so I recently started working uh, in a new company, and when I did, I had to undergo a lot of background verification uh, in terms of you know the employer reaching out to me, and I have reached out to universities and professors, and then reached out to my ex-employers to ask them about that this person is contacting you and give them relevant information about me. So what I found out during this time is it's very inefficient and time sensitive. Like the employers have to waste their time and their human resources just to, in order to do this, and then it is redundant. So if you're a new company, you have to do this process all over again. Start from scratch, you reach out to employers again, reach out to previous employers again, and do it all over again. And there are security issues. And security issues, when I say it's, I don't want my personal data, such as my transcripts, my history, my great history, my employment records, to not be hosted on someone else's platform, say my previous employer's platform. I wanted to have control all over all of the data. So our solution would try to mitigate these issues. And give me this before. Uh, so our solution um, is a, we use uh, a decentralized, uh, Guzel's decentralized uh, database uh, by tr uh, storing the files on, uh, and data on their decentralized platform. And then uh, this allows us to have a one-time verification. So we have all, all our data on, on the platform. Uh, so um, it could be tra uh, transferred to the institution or uh, workplace uh, by an end-to-end -end encryption uh, method, and uh, which allows us to securely uh, share share the data between the institutions uh, because it's on on a decentralized database. Okay, so we're gonna do a quick live demo right here. Um, hopefully, oh, the uh, the swarm is actually working because we are writing to the real database. Uh, so as you can see here, oh yeah. So for this demo, we're gonna showcase a student who wants their transcripts I uh, verified. <coughs> And you have two views. One is from the perspective of the student, and one is from the perspective of the university who has to verify the transcript, as you can see here. So the student may add a new request, say to SFU, add their name, Elon Musk, uh, student number one, course, junior comp side course, got it a B. Submit the verification, and it should be loading. There you go. See right here? It's now it has been saved to the actual database, um, and you can take, the student can take a look at the thing that they submitted, but they cannot edit it anymore. So from the university's perspective, they can, at the touch of one button, verify their previous transcript. This can, doesn't have to be an entry field. It can be like a photo of a PDF or whatever. So they can approve the verification, and it is updated. Oh, 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 oh I clicked it by accident. So now it's verified. And now this is saved back to Uzel's database. It, this entire process is encrypted from we're using the university's public key to encrypt this so that only they can read it. You can send it to whoever. Um, so from this point on, you can share from whenever you want and to whoever. And yeah. Yeah, so. In terms of the actual application, so we can start out by talking about how like solving Varun's issue where you're trying to share information with employers and making sure that information is actually true. But you can also talk about much more things. You can start with schools, you can go to employers, but you can also go all the way up to government. With things like PR, um, it takes a really, really long time to actually get it verified because it's something you need security for if you want to make someone a Canadian citizen or an American citizen or whatever other country, you want to make sure that everything they're telling you is the truth. And through these systems, with time obviously, with all the bureaucracy, you can eventually get it to the point where all the verifications, and you have a full ID profile, so for example, from sending government, they have one key where they have a lot more information than, for example, I'd send to a school. Because for my master's degree, I might not need to send as much information as I would for uh, Canadian permanent residence or even citizenship. Um, and then we thought about how much more you can do with it, such as bank logins, uh, verification on things like LinkedIn or other spots where, like Twitter, uh, just to make sure the person is who they say they are and all their experiences are what they say they were. 
uh, as well as something as simple as an educational discount so people aren't taking advantage of what should benefit students. Thank you. Thanks. Any questions? Any questions from the judges? Mike's on the table. So, uh, first question is kind of more of a, I guess, business uh, human behavior question. Uh, what incentivization would any source of truth like a university or whoever have to actually go in there and actively approve or disapprove requests that for are made to them? Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, actually, yeah, everyone's probably best. So the reason for that is once to, like once but they do it plus one one time plus one thing only it doesn't have to repeat like over and over again. So for example, I join a new company, they don't have to reach out to the university again. So it's a one time thing. So university has to do it once and then it is stored on your work profile. And then you can share it with the, with the new employer, with the new government institution. So once it's verified, it's verified. So if you change it, then it it, it will have to verify again, which I think you will do. Yes, so yeah, if you look at it, uh, essentially what the value you're getting from it is the time you save. So for example, um, to verify someone's transcripts, it takes two to three days, and if you're an international student, it can take up to two weeks to send over your transcript. Uh, as well with employment, if the guy is in the office, sure, he'll answer his phone, but if he's not in the office, it could take up to a month, two months, maybe they're on an international trip. So a lot of these things are not verifiable, plainly because of human circumstance. So this is a huge time saver for both the user, so me as, an, as someone who's applying, and the employers, the, the people who are checking, as well as the people who they're getting reference checks from. So in the end, that person never gets a call because they've already verified my information once. Uh, sure, I understand, but I, I guess my question is, I mean, right now there's a delay, which is obviously due to bureaucracy and uh, many other things. Um, so what I'm trying to, I, what I'm still asking is, if I'm sitting at the registrar of Simon Fraser University and uh, I'm a busy person, as I would be, and a request comes in through this service saying, hey, go in and you've got 100 requests from different people to approve or disapprove all these uh, claims, uh, what, who, first of all, was compensating me or what, why would I make the effort to even go in there? Why would those queries get responded to so promptly as you're claiming? In the I don't know how it works everywhere. I know in the States, if I want to get a transcript, I have to pay money to the university to give me the transcript. So I don't see any reason why that would change in this model. The university would just do less work. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, right, so, that, so they're yeah. still incentivized. They're like, yeah, pay me, and I'll reach the spot. Yeah, so currently, I think you're trying to ask, like, why would Harvard take the time of day to verify someone if it doesn't benefit them? But right now, how it works is they are verifying people, but just through different methods. So people would be calling in, asking, like, did this student actually go there? So they are, yeah, it's true. Like, why would they do the kind of things? But they're already doing it in a different format. So this is just a, a simpler way and a quicker way to do that. So you can build that payment system yeah. so that they're, yeah. they're incentivized to go in and question. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's your I'd also like to point out our current verification systems are horribly broken. Sometimes people are just asking for pieces of paper that have a proper student ID and they don't even know if it's formatted correctly. Like, sure, I got a 5.0. <laughs> Any other questions from our judges? No? Awesome.